Hey everyone, this is Rick Morgan, your friendly comic book scientist. I want to talk to you a little bit about material selection for these, for these pressing boards, heat pressing boards. I've already discussed why we get them. It's, they act as like thermal flywheels to hold up heat and conduct it and even it out the heat and the pressure from your comic book press. But what material do you want to use and why? I use 6061, and if I can't get it, 5052 aluminum, and it's pretty stiff holds up a lot of heat, works well for this purpose, and that's the material I settled on. But why, well, why, Rick, have you, did, have you settled on this material? I did that because of uh, properties. These are the properties. Let's look at what we want to balance here when we're looking at properties. We want to balance specific heat capacity. What's that? Actually, is that the only thing in there? I think I had thermal conductivity in here as well. Uh, yep, there it is. So I had thermal conductivity. That allows us to take the heat from the press and to conduct it through to the book and how evenly it spreads out. Now that's one property we want to want it to be very high. Okay. Specific heat capacity, we want that also to be high. That's how much heat it can store up so that if you turn the heater off, it has that much held in it and slowly leaks it out to the book. Why do we want that? Because if we're gonna heat the book, we're gonna preheat underneath, we want a lot of heat stored there, a lot of energy stored there that come through the book. And we want it to come through slowly because it helps to train the paper to be flat better if it cools down at a slower rate. Usually about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes is the ideal time to come back down to ambient. Stiffness, we want that to be high because we won't want it to, to bend or flex under normal conditions, right? Uh, now, the first two things are very important. I put this at an importance of 0.1. It was much less important. Why is it less important? Because uh, it's in a laminating press. So it's not gonna, it's gonna be forced flat anyway. So, I mean, it's not like we're resisting the flexing force, right? We are pressing something that's fat. It has some importance because we don't want it to be so flexible that it wraps around the comic book, but yeah, it's not super, it's not nearly as important as the first two. That's why I gave it a 0.1 cost. We want that to be low. We want the cost of that to be low. Um, I gave it a 0.75 because it's not gonna make or break for us a lot of times, where this is important enough work that if the other things overwhelm those properties, we'll pay more to get it. Corrosion, we want that to be low. It's typically not a big deal because we don't usually do this in a corrosive environment, although they get hot, they get heated, and sometimes the books are wet, especially if they've been steamed or been wet clean, there could be a little bit of moisture coming out and those will cause pit corrosion in some things, uh, so especially steel. So we want that uh, to be high, corrosion resistance to be high. So we want the uh, the rate of corrosion to be low, that's what I should say. Uh, and hardness, and the, we want hardness to be high, but it's also low importance, why? Because we're putting pressing boards on either side of it anyway. There isn't a case where we're not gonna do it. So if it gets marred or scratched or has a mark in it, it doesn't really make that much different than us because we have a gasket on it anyway on either side. There's no case where you shouldn't put something around the book, between the book and this metal, to basically take up any gaps in the spacing and also to prevent any imperfections in the metal from coming through. So I gave it low importance. Now, what are the materials that we're looking at here? It could be copper, brass, I mean, it could be diamond, I don't know. We're, saying metals primarily, but it could be all kinds of stuff, right? But I've settled on talking about, people say stainless steel. Well, you could have, I mean, I took 304 and 316, but there are lots of stainless steels. You could have a 301, you could have 409, there's 430, there are different applications. There's ones for easy machinability, malleability, ductility, hardness, corrosion resistance, chloride, chloride resistance. I mean, there's all kinds of things. There's ones that have uh, less hydrogen embrittlement, all kinds of stuff you can have, but I just took two popular ones. So if someone just says, I'm using stainless steel, ask them, hey, which one? You know, that's a reasonable question. Um, aluminum, there's like 1100, 303, 3003, 5052, 6061, and whether they have magnesium or silicon or all the kinds of things in it. I tend to use 6061 as magnesium and silicon alloyed in it. Uh, if I can only get the 5052, I use that. So I put these four in here, these properties, and we're gonna start a design experiment. We're gonna optimize on it, see what happens here. So here's our data, I looked this up. Uh, much of it I got in tables, the corrosion data I have, because I run, uh, I have a B117 
uh, salt fog chamber. I have a corrosion cycling chamber uh, so I can get the corrosion resistance data in millimeters per year. Everything else you can also look up yourself. So we have a graph builder. Instead of going over the data in detail, I'm gonna just uh, add the material as the x-axis. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start with thermal conductivity on the y. I'm gonna make this bar graph. And I'm gonna drag material to the color to make it more interesting. And you can see when we start, we have the thermal conductivity of the aluminum alloys are way higher than those of the, the steel, the stainless steels. So, but let's add a column switcher. I don't see the symbol for column switcher here in this one. I'll go ahead and add that. I'm gonna add thermal conductivity with uh, these guys here, go okay. And now I'm just gonna be able to kind of step through these, these data and show you really easily. So let's look at specific heat capacity closer right but still aluminum's winning stiffness is steel's got that game handled uh cost eh, it's a mix you can get some aluminums that are more expensive than some stainless steels and then some stainless steels it's uh, similar similar usually aluminum is cheaper than i mean is more expensive than mild steel but stainless steels it's a lot closer corrosion resistance obviously uh the uh, lower is better in this case. This is how much corrosion, this is how much material you lose per year. So I say corrosion resistance, it's really, it should be corrosion. This is how many millimeters per year that you, you use, uh, that you lose. And so you want that to be low. And aluminum creams, even with stainless steel. Let's say, if they say stainless steel, believe me, stainless steel rusts. Uh, even in its pressing comics, it happens, especially if there's moisture and heat, but it's not an important variable, right? It's not important because we're not really in a corrosive environment we're not dropping these in the ocean. Hardness, steel clearly wins hardness. Again, not an important variable. We use gaskets and of, of paper and things between the steel and the book. So it's modestly important, but not super important. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my data table and we'll leave that there. And we'll come back and we'll revisit and optimize here. All right, well, let's run a quick optimization routine on the data we have so far. So let's see, model, I'm just gonna run standard, standard least squares, effect screening, we only have one input, it's discrete, so we can't cross it or nest it here and jump. So I'm gonna just run this baby down. There should be a profiler down here somewhere. There it is. So what does the profiler tell us? On the left, we have the outputs, thermal conductivity, heat capacity, stiffness, cost, corrosion, hardness, and desirability. We have the materials we're looking at here. Now, these aren't continuous. We can't do, we can't make a blend of these things, right? They're discrete. So we have to pick one or they have to land on one and not in between them. So I can't do like slopes and intercepts and um, I'm not repeating this to get an error analysis and stuff, but here's my desirabilities. I've said the thermal conductivity, I want to be high. The heat capacity, I want to be high. Stiffness, I want to be high, but remember I gave it a lower importance. Cost, I want that to be low, that was a medium importance. And I also said corrosion in millimeters per year, and I changed it from corrosion resistance, right? I want that number uh, to be low. I want the corrosion resistance to be low, which is this negative slope. I want the hardness to be high, but again, not as important. Let's ask the computer in its <clears throat> wizened ways to choose a material for us from the ones we selected. I go to optimize and desirability, maximize desirability. And it says aluminum 5052. Hallelujah. That's the one that gets us as close as we want. It gets us a high thermal conductivity, high heat capacity, a low stiffness, but we said it wasn't as important. Cost is low-ish. Low, it's actually low. Uh, corrosion is very low. Hardness is low. We'd like it to be higher, but we gave up to get the other things. And overall desirability is about maximized. It's as high as we can get on our table. So. Um, that, my friends, is how we pick any material we want to use. So if you see, you know, uh, a materials out there and you're thinking, I want to make a, a aluminum pressing board or a steel pressing board, or copper has high heat conductivity, but you're trying to wonder what materials could I use, this is how you do it. You know, try to, try to use the old noggin sometimes and not just uh, blindly listen to even what I say, right? If I tell you something, use this. Hey, Rick, why are you doing that? Sometimes it's no reason at all. Sometimes I don't have a better 
uh, stuff to use right now on me. And so I'm using that thing that happens to be sitting right there. And that's a genuine answer. It happens to people all the time. But if someone comes up to you and says, hey, man, you got to use copper. You have to use glass and plastic won't work. Or you have to use steel. Just say, hey, why? Why? And then make your own decisions from that. Maybe cost is more important to you than it is to me. You have a different outcome, right? Maybe thermal conductivity you don't care about. Well, that would be dumb. You, you, you definitely don't want to care about that. Some things is inflexible on. But, you know, you might have your own way of choosing your own materials. This is how I choose my materials. And this is what I sell and why I sell it. So anyway, I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.